Hello everyone, in today's video we will be discussing about irrigation in endodontics. And the contents of today's presentation are introduction, goals of irrigation, irrigating solutions, challenges of irrigation, irrigation devices and techniques and lastly in summary. Introduction, the main goal of the root canal treatment is to completely eliminate the different components of pulpal tissue, calcification and bacteria in the placement of a biocompatible seal to prevent infection or reinfection and to promote healing of the surrounding tissues if needed. And the success of endodontic treatment depends on the eradication of microbes if present, organic and inorganic debris from the root canal system and prevention of reinfection. The cleansing and eradication of debris from the minuscule canal system is possible with the use of certain flowable liquid chemicals and this procedure is called irrigation. Goals of irrigation to facilitate removal of microorganisms, tissue remnants and dental chips, dentin chips from the root canal through a flossing mechanism. Irrigants can also help prevent packing of the hardened soft tissue in the apical root canal and extrusion of infected material into the periapical area. Some irrigating solutions dissolve either organic or inorganic tissue in the root canal. In addition, several irrigating solutions have antimicrobial activity and actively kill bacteria and yeast when introduced in direct contact with the microorganisms. The ideal properties of irrigating solutions, this is quite important for a short answer question. Washing action. A good irrigating solution should have good washing action. It should help remove the debris and it should reduce instrument friction during preparation. It should act as a lubricant. It should facilitate dentin removal. It should dissolve inorganic tissue that is dentin and it should penetrate to canal periphery. It should penetrate to canal periphery and it should dissolve organic matter. It should kill bacteria and yeast and it should not irritate or damage vital periapical tissue and it should not have cytotoxic effects and it should not weaken the tooth structure. Uh, several irrigating solutions uh, used in the industry are sodium hypochlorite, NaOCl, EDTA, ethylene diamine triacetic acid, citric acid, chlorhexidine digluconate and other irrigating solutions uh, and different combination products like chlor extra, chlor CHX plus, etc. Sodium hypochlorite. Sodium hypochlorite is the most popular irrigating solution. It uh, ionizes into water and sodium and the hypochlorite ion, OCL, establishing an equilibrium with hypochlorous acid. And at acidic and neutral pH, chlorine exists as HOCl, that is hypochlorite, hypochlorous acid, whereas it high pH of 9 and above OCL predominates. OCL is hypochlorite ion. Hypochlorous acid is responsible for the antibacterial activity and the OCL ion is uh, less effective than the undissolved HOCL. Hypochloric acid disrupts several vital functions of the microbial cell resulting in cell death. And it is commonly used in concentrations between 0.5% and 6%. It is potent antimicrobial agent, killing most bacteria instantly on direct contact. It also effectively dissolves pulpal remnants and collagen, the main organic components of dentin. Hypochlorite is the only root canal irrigant of those in general use that dissolves necrotic and vital organic tissue. It is used as an unbuffered solution at pH 11 in the various concentrations mentioned earlier a buffered with bicarbonate buffer pH 9.0 usually is 0.5% or 1% solution and it is known as Dakin solution. And the weaknesses of sodium hypochlorite include the unpleasant taste, toxicity and its inability to remove the smear layer by itself as it dissolves only organic material. Toxicity when accidentally injected it uh, is uh, it causes local tissue toxicity it is very painful so sodium hypochlorite uh, syringes should be labeled properly the limited antimicrobial effectiveness of sodium hypochlorite is also disappointing 
and then similarly EDTA ethylene diamantate triacetic acid and citric acid they effectively dissolve the inorganic material including hydroxyapatite NaOCl dissolve the organic and EDTA and uh, citric acid dissolve inorganic they have little or no effect on organic tissue and alone they do not have antibacterial activity despite some conflicting reports on EDTA. EDTA is most commonly used as a 17% neutralized solution, disodium EDTA with pH 7. But a few reports have indicated that solutions with lower concentrations, example 10, 5 and even 1% remove the smear layer equally well after sodium hypochlorite irrigation. EDTA and CA continued. Carbonic... Uh, Citric acid, it is also marketed and used in various concentrations ranging from 1 to 50 percent with a 10 percent solution being the most common. EDTA and CA are used for 2 to 3 minutes at the end of the instrumentation after sodium hypochlorite irrigation. Sodium hypochlorite first removes the organic material, organic debris and then for inorganic debris, EDTA and CA, citric acid are used. Removal of the smear layer by EDTA C improves the antibacterial effect of locally used disinfecting agents in deeper layers of dentin. Uh, they are manufactured as liquids and gel. Chlorhexidin digluconate CHX it is widely used in disinfection and dentistry because of its good antimicrobial activity and it is used as an irrigating solution and an intracanal medicament. It permeates the microbial cell wall or outer membrane and attacks the bacterial cytoplasmic or inner membrane or the yeast plasma membrane. In higher concentrations, chlorhexidine causes coagulation of the intracellular components and it has got the property of substantivity. Substantivity is the property of chlorhexidine that, that it remains up to 12 hours in the oral mucosa and it provides continued antimicrobial effect. CHX does not cause erosion of dentin like uh, NaOCl does. Is the final rinse after EDTA. Okay, after irrigation done with EDTA, sodium hypochlorite should not be used again because it causes erosion of dentin. Therefore, 2% CHX may be a good choice for maximized antibacterial effect at the end of the chemomechanical preparation. It is marketed as a water-based solution and also as a gel. Other irrigating solutions used in endodontics are sterile waters, physiologic saline, hydrogen peroxide, urea peroxide and iodine compounds. All of these except iodine compounds lack antibacterial activity when used alone and they do not dissolve tissue either. Therefore, there is no good reason for their use in canal irrigation in routine cases. In addition, water and saline solutions bear the risk of contamination if used from containers that have been opened more than once. Interactions between irrigating solutions. Hypochlorite and EDTA are the two most commonly used irrigating solutions. However, EDTA and citric acid instantaneously reduce the amount of chlorine when mixed with sodium hypochlorite resulting in the loss of NaOCl activity. Thus, these solutions should not be mixed. It should be used in sequential order. Okay, first NaOCl and then EDTA. They should not be mixed and used at once. Interactions. CHX and NaCl, NaOCl are not soluble in each other, but a brownish orange precipitate is formed when they are mixed. Presence of Parachloranilin, which may have mutagenic potential, has also been demonstrated in the precipitate. Hence, you should never mix. Mixing CHX and EDTA immediately produces a white precipitate and also the ability of EDTA to remove the smear layer is reduced. And several combination products are on the market, many with some evidence of improved activity and function. Surface active agents known as surfactants which are present in detergents, they have been added to several different types of irrigants to lower their surface tension and to improve their penetration in the root canal. Detergents have also been added to some EDTA preparations for better smear layer removal. Examples are smear clear and hypochlorite, chlorextra, white king. And detergent addition has been shown to increase the speed of tissue dissolution by hypochlorite. MTAD, new combination product, a mixture of tetracycline isomer T, acid, that is basically citric acid, and detergent, TAD, 
mixture of TAD, tetracycline, acid, and detergent, and tetraclean are the new combination products for root canal irrigation that contain an antibiotic doxycycline. Okay, tetracycline, that is doxycycline. MTAD and tetracline are designed primarily for small layer removal with added antimicrobial activity. Both contain citric acid, doxycycline, and a detergent. They do not dissolve organic tissue and are intended for use at the end of the chemomechanical preparation after sodium hypochlorite. These are the example of combination products and challenges of irrigation. Removal of the smear layer is straightforward and predictable when the correct irrigants are used. Relying on EDTA alone or other irrigants with activity against the inorganic matter only, however, results in incomplete removal of the layer. Therefore, use of hypochlorite during instrumentation cannot be omitted. Okay, only the inorganic products will be removed and the organic product will be remain inside the canal that will cause reinfection. So, hypochlorite should always be used. The smear layer is created only on areas touched by the instruments. However, careless irrigation with needles introduced only to the coronal and middle parts of the root canal is likely to result in incomplete removal of the smear layer in the apical root canal. Similarly, Long-term exposure to high concentrations of hypochlorite can lead to considerable reduction in the flexural strength and elastic modulus of dentin. Even a short-term irrigation with hypochlorite after EDTA and CA at the end of the chemomechanical preparation also causes a strong erosion of the canal wall surface dentin. And so, hypochlorite irrigation after demineralization agents should be avoided. Instead, chlorhexidine irrigation could be used for additional disinfection at the end of the treatment. Cleaning the uninstrumented parts of the root canal system, cleaning and removing the necrotic tissue, debris, and biofilms from untouched areas, which could be the anastomosis between two canals rely completely on chemical means because we cannot reach there and sufficient use of sodium hypochlorite is the key factor in obtaining the desired result in these areas. Although at present it is not known how to these debris can best be removed, it is likely that physical, physical agitation, for example ultrasound activating uh, devices okay, and the use of demineralizing agents are indeed uh, quite important in addition to the hypochlorite. Biofilm can be removed or eliminated through the following methods mechanical removal and dissolution by hypochlorite, detachment by ultrasonic energy, and other chemical means such as CHX. Also, however, CHX lacks tissue dissolving activity. The dead microbial biomass stays in the canal if not removed mechanically or dissolved by hypochlorite. CHX has antimicrobial property, yes. The bacteria are dead, but if they are not removed mechanically by filing, this may cause problems. Any remaining organic matter, microbes or vital or necrotic tissue jeopardizes the integrity of the seal of the root filling. Therefore, the goal of the treatment is not only to kill the microbes in the root canal, but also to remove them as completely as possible. Now, we can see here the biofilm, uh, scanning electron microscope um, picture of a biofilm that is covering the dentinal tubules. And in the second picture, we can see the dentin erosion, the tubules are demineralized. Safety and the effectiveness in the apical root canal. Irrigation must maintain a balance between two important goals. The irrigation should be effective as well as safety should be uh, always be considered. Effectiveness is often jeopardized in the apical root canal by restricting anatomy and valid safety concerns. Sufficient exchange of hypochlorite and other irrigants in this area while keeping the apical pressure of the solutions minimal is the obvious goal of this irrigations of the apical root canal. A better understanding of the fluid dynamics and the development of new needle designs and equipment for irrigant delivery. Root canal is a very small space and we should reach there 
but we should not use too much pressure. The effectiveness and safety of irrigation depends on the means of delivery. Traditionally, irrigation has been performed with a plastic syringe and an open-ended needle into the canal space. An increasing number of novel needle tip designs and equipment are emerging in an effort to better address the challenges of irrigation. Irrigation devices like plastic syringes of different sizes, 1 to 20 ml, although large boardroom syringes potentially allow some time savings, they are more difficult to control. So, 1 to 5 ml syringes are recommended instead of the larger ones. All the syringes for endodontic irrigation must have a lower lock design. That is, you can see in the top, they have got lock. This is called lower lock design. If this is there, the needle doesn't uh, come off easily when pressure is applied. Because of the chemical reactions between many irrigants, separate syringes should be used for each solution. Okay, here is a 1 ml syringe and here is 10, 20. 1, 5, 10, 20. All size syringes are available and the uh, gauzes 25, 27, 30 and 31 gauze. Small needle sizes are preferred. Although the smaller needles allow delivery of the irrigant close to the apex, it is not without safety concerns. We may accidentally poke the apex. Several modifications of the needle tip design have been introduced in recent years to facilitate effectiveness and minimize the safety risks. Flexible needles also allow to follow the curved canals. And different needle designs are this is side vented and only half at the apex. This is also side vented needle. This is the beveled one. It is curved needle. And we can see here the side vented needles can also be used to clean the periodontal pockets. And the tip is rounded to protect the tissue. And when it is used in the root canal, it is designed so that it produces an upward flossing motion for complete canal irrigation. And side port dispersal prevents the solution and debris from being expressed through the apex forcefully that irrigants cannot reach the apex and closed rounded and in reduce the risk of apex damage okay it is available in different diameter and others use of apically fitting gutta percha cones in an up and down motion at the working length that is also effective Indo activator is a new type of irrigation facilitator. It is based on the sonic vibration up to 10,000 cycle per minute. It has different size of tips that are easily uh, attached on the handpiece and it creates the sonic vibrations. Indo activator does not deliver new irrigant to the canal but it facilitates the penetration and renewal of the irrigant in the canal. And it works like this. It is vibrating. It is inserted into the canal and it is uh, switched on and the irrigants is vibrated. Uh, also, Vibrins is a new sonic irrigation system that combines battery driven vibrations with manually operated irrigation of the root canal with 9000 cycles per minute. It reuses the traditional type of syringe but it adds sonic vibration. Pressure vacuum mechanisms uh, rinse and dough. It is based on the suction mechanism with approximately 100 cycles per minute and the risk is that there can be over irrigation. Indovac. Indovac is, is a novel approach as instead of delivering the irrigant through the needle, it is based on the negative pressure approach whereby the irrigant placed in the pulp chamber is sucked down the root canal and back up again through the thin needle with a special design. Evidence of lower complications. And the endovac, it is the endovac, okay. The remaining irrigants from the canal is soaked with this. Ultrasonics together with an irrigant contributes to a better cleaning of the root canal system than irrigation hand, hand instrument alone. Cavitation and acoustic and streaming is in the case of ultrasonic scaling. This contribute to the biologic uh, chemical activity for maximum effectiveness. Analysis of the physical mechanisms of the hydrodynamic response of an oscillating ultrasonic file suggests that stable and transient cavitation of a file, steady streaming and a cavitation micro streaming all contribute to the cleaning of the root canal. Ultrasonic files must have free movement in the canal without making contact with the canal wall to work effectively. 
In summarizing the today's presentation, irrigation has a key role in successful endodontic treatment. Although hypochlorite is the most important irrigating solution, no single irritant can accomplish all the tasks required by irrigation. Detailed understanding of the mode of activation of various solutions is important for optimal irrigation. New developments in technologies and mechanical devices will help to advance safe and effective irrigation. And these are all our references. Thanks for watching the video.